Boxingboys.com live here with Manuel Robles. Manny, how's New York treating you, man? So far, so good, man. We just got in last night, and it's a, it's always great to come into New York. People are great here. Obviously, you've been to New York before. One week is good for this, uh, for the magnitude of this fight to get ready for acclimated with the time zone change. I believe so. I mean, we're coming from the West Coast, so I think we have everything in our favor. It's three hours earlier back home, so. It, it suits its well. It's not a problem at all. Now, uh, many people are calling this a late-minute replacement, but is this something that you, I guess, are happy with? Because he's coming right out of a camp. Well, because the fight couldn't have come at a better time. I mean, we uh, if you look at the bigger picture, we had a 10-week camp uh, prior to uh, Dimitrenko. We get the tune-up with Dimitrenko, and then we get this fight. So. The fight couldn't have come at a better time. I get him right back in the gym again, you know, and didn't get a whole lot of time off. Got a few days off, and he's still in shape. He came in, he came back to the gym at his, um, I believe he came back to the gym at 168, and that was his uh, fight weight the day of the fight. Oh, sorry, 268, thank you. And that was his fight weight at the, the day of the fight. So, yeah, he's, he's in good shape. So, obviously, you've been in, you know, in this situation with Dominic Brazil. Correct. Um, and unlike Brazil, who changed trainers last minute, you have more time with, with Andy. How is that going to be beneficial for Fight Night? Uh, I mean, uh, Andy and I have been together for, for uh, we're going on two years now. We know each other quite well. Uh, Andy is in a different state of mind now. He's in, uh, his, uh, mentally, physically, he's just somewhere else right now. He's in a better uh, position than he was when he fought uh, Parker. Uh, he's in better shape. He's uh, more motivated than ever, especially with the... Uh, change in um, uh, promotional company management with uh, Al Heyman. I mean, he's uh, he's just a better fighter. Uh, and then, again, and the fight couldn't come at a better time due to all those situations. Now, there's headlines out there that say Andy Ruiz is watching Mike Tyson footage. Um, what are what exactly is he? I mean, I'm assuming that he wants to work on that lateral move, that side to side to get on the inside, get around AJ's jab. Um, is that the truth? I don't know. I didn't know that he was watching Mike Tyson's footage. Uh -oh. But if he is, great. I mean, you know, my job is to get him ready. And, uh, you know, we don't partic I don't particularly sit down and watch other Mike Tyson. But if he is, then great. I'll power to him. The more, the more knowledge, the more uh, he picks up on, the better. What's it going to take to defeat Anthony Joshua? Like I said, you've been here before, so you have to feel like you have an edge versus other trainers that never seen him on the Correct. opposite side. Yeah, well, you know, you can't compare. I mean, you, you mentioned uh, Dominic Brazil earlier. You can't compare. Uh, you can't. Uh, there's two different fighters, uh, Andy and, and Dominic, with all due respect to Dom. Just two different fighters, man. Height-wise, style-wise. I believe that uh, Andy's a more experienced fighter of the two. He's been around for a lot longer than than than, uh, than Dominic. Dominic got a, a late start in boxing. Well, uh, Andy's been... He had a, well over 100 amateur fights. Uh, was with the Mexican national team had a lot of international exposure, and of course, has that more many fights than uh, than uh, than Joshua or even Dominic in this case. So he's got a what, 32 professional fights, 32, 32, 33. So he's he's been there, you know. Plus he's fought for the world title. Unfortunately, he came he came in short when he fought Parker. You know, uh, the decision didn't go his way. But uh, I, I believe that you learn more from your defeats than you do from your wins. So that's the fight that he learned a lot from and, uh, and it, it got him to where he is today. Now, for, for casual fans, height and reach mean so much. You know, mm -hmm. we look at Andy Ruiz, we see he's only six feet one, six foot even, and we think, how could he possibly hit the bigger man? As a trainer, how much of a disadvantage is it to be the shorter man, or is it a disadvantage at all? It's not a disadvantage at all. It's not at all. I mean, obviously we're fighting the best heavyweight in, in boxing today. It's going to be a big challenge, but Andy has every opponent that Andy's ever faced, including Dimitrenko, which is a taller fighter than... Uh, than uh, than Joshua is, he did great. He did great, great getting in, and getting in, getting on the inside, and then uh, counter punching his jab, and uh, you know being able, able to move side to side and getting through that guard. And we just got to do the same thing all over again. Now, 
Was there any rumors that he could have been a possible replacement before the Dimitrenko fight, or did it all really come after that fight? Uh, it really came after. I mean, uh, there were talks, but my job is, as, as a coach is to, was to keep uh, Andy Reese uh, focused on the, task at, on the task at hand, which was Dimitrenko, and not le really think about anything else but that. You know, and, and of course, you know, we got the W, and then after the W came, then, you know, the, the, you know, the, uh, the, the negotiations began, if you will. There were more talks, but it had nothing to do with that. It was all Andy, man. He's, Andy's the one that made this happen, by all means. I'm just asking because it seems so perfect that you got Dimitrenko as a tuna. You could have got a shorter guy. You could have got a, you know, a guy that didn't, fit perfectly. Right? Like that was like the perfect fight before fighting the taller Anthony Joshua. And I Correct. wanted to know, was that part of the game plan? Was it like, well, we're going to get this Joshua fight, might as well get Dermatrenko No, in not at all. Not at all, but it worked out great, as I said. It worked out. The scenario was perfect. The, the, the way things went about were perfect. Again, having a 10-week camp and then fighting Dimitrenko and then, and then Joshua. I mean, it almost seemed that way. It almost seems like it was it was set up this way when it really wasn't. It was just a coincidence. It was destiny, just like just like now, you know. We just we get we get we got the lucky number, you know, just to fight for the world title. It could be anybody. It could be it could be Deontay Wilder. It could be uh, 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 you know, in this case, uh, Anthony Joshua or anybody that's a world champion. Your your dream as a fighter is to fight for the world title. Whoever that is, whoever the champion is at the time, and luckily, you know, we got uh, you know we got the fight. You call Anthony Joshua the best heavyweight, so what is it that you think your fighter does better than the best heavyweight? Well, he's never fought a, a fighter like uh, like Andy Reese, uh, Anthony Joshua has. Uh, you know, he, and I said this before, uh, Andy, uh, Andy Reese, you can, stylistically, you can compare Andy Reese to some of the greats, like Marco Antonio Barrera or like Eric Morales or even, uh, I've said this, Oscar Valdez, stylist, style-wise. You know, he's a, he's a crawl pleaser. He's the type of fighter that likes to get on the inside and likes to work that body and break you down. And I really don't think that, uh, I, really, I really don't think uh, Anthony, Joshua, Anthony Joshua has ever fought anybody with the likes of, uh, uh, of uh, Andy Reese. Now, Ruiz's latest headline is that he knows he can do better than Dillian White and Carlos Tackle. Have you watched those two fights? And I just want to ask, have you watched the Povetkin fight? Because those are the three men that had the most success with uh, Anthony Joshua. Mm -hmm. Shorter yeah. men that had yeah, success correct. with Anthony Correct. Joshua. Yeah, absolutely. Especially the Tackle fight. Uh, Baby Miller, you mentioned uh, well, he never fought Joshua, but... But, uh, but I believe that uh, Andy Reese is a better fighter than, than maybe Miller, with all due respect. He's just quicker, he's a more combination fighter, faster, slicker. I mean, I just believe he's a better fighter I overall. Miller, I meant to say, Ruiz said he he feels he's going to do better than Dillian and Tackle. Oh, I got you. Than Dillian Way. Uh, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see. I, I And I apologize if I got the wrong there, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see about that. I, I just believe that uh, my my guy, my fighter, and Andy Reese is uh, he's a special type of guy. I just don't believe that uh, Anthony Joshua has ever fought anybody with, within the likes of Andy Reese. And I like our chances. You know, I know it's going to be tough. I know we got the again, as I said, the fighter that I believe is the best fighter heavyweight in the world because he's a complete fighter. You know, he's got a great jab. He's a great boxer. He's got a, a, a great ring generalship, but uh, so so does Andy, you know. And uh, I just I, I, I like her chances. So they brought in Joey DeWelco for sparring. I thought that was like a good, perfect guy to mimic Andy. Not as fast as Andy. Maybe doesn't have the pop of Andy, but definitely uh, you know the size and he's got good skill. Correct. What would you think? I think they, they did the right thing, and you got to do your homework as a as a coach, and uh, and then you try to uh, strategy. What you do is you try to strategize, and you try to find a proper sparring, you know. And there's not a lot of big heavyweights in they boxing. Greg Corbin too, who just right. lost to Philip Arcoyo. No, there you go. So you know you got some pretty good sparring partners there, and that's that's your job as a coach is to to find the proper sparring partners, you know. Uh, moving into a fight uh it's uh on the other hand in, in our case it's not that hard to find big heavyweights normally so every use? every 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 fighter that uh 
that uh, uh, Andy fights is bigger. So yeah, oh, we used to a few guys. You know, we used to a few guys back in California. I mean, we got a no couple, names, had a no couple names. guys. No, no, well, I rather just keep that to myself. And Man, it's fight oh, yeah. week. It's too late for the for, right? for that to help. Nah, out. it's okay. I mean, we got we we got some good guys, and we have some great great. I mean, it's California. So it's not that hard to find sparring in Cali, you know what I mean? We didn't have to bring anybody from out of state, that's for sure. You know, we had a we had a great camp. Uh, we fight. We had five weeks to get ready for this fight, and uh, actually four or five with this one. And uh, you know, we didn't have to spar a whole lot because you know we just again we just had a, a ten week camp, and uh, but we just fine fine tuned and, and it just pretty much got them ready. We did spar. We did go twelve rounds because we have to. Uh, but uh, you know, we'll, be we'll be ready. He's got a great camp. He, we had a great camp. Does Ruiz make it to the 12th round? Uh, does Joshua make it to the 12th round? <laughs> you know, that's that's the question. I believe it's gonna look. We're ready to go 12 rounds. You know, that's what we prepare for. We don't prepare for a knockout. I don't think any fighter ever ever prepares to go. To, you know, to get a knockout. I mean, you know, you're, you're a world title actually, fighter. Gotta go, you better go 12. I was actually checking yesterday. That is his biggest knockout. Ruiz. The Machenko's the biggest knockout on his career. You think he has the power to knock out Joshua? Joshua's taking some shots. Yeah, well, yes, he has. And, and he's been hurt a couple times, so we'll, we'll see. And Andy, on the other hand, he's never been down. He's never been down or hurt, you know. And, and Joshua has, so we'll, we'll see what happens. You know what I mean? It'll, it'll be an interesting night of boxing, that's for sure. A lot of us think it's going to be interesting, like you said, because of the hand speed. How much are we buying into that hand speed? Is that, is that going to be a big, big difference? or? I think it's a combination of different things. I think it has, you know, being able to get on the speed, of course, the hand speed, and be, being able to get on the inside and then chop them down, you know, from being able to go to the body. And uh, uh, and uh, fighting, you know, looking, fight, look, looking for. Um, just we gotta be ready for everything, uh, different situations and different circumstances. I, I think we have a, uh, you know, obviously being able to fight on the edge, inside if we find ourselves on the on the inside, and obviously being able to fight on the outside as well, and, uh, and creating angles and uh, working that body and. Uh, Counter punching. I mean, there's. I mean, we've worked on different things, as I said. You can't just work on one specifically. But uh, we'll be ready. All right, well, Manny, man, I want to thank you. Obviously, thank you. Uh, if you're on the social media, give it out at this time. Manu, Manu Dogbox. And uh, we wish you the best for Saturday night. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Enjoy the video. Feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the Patreon com backslash the boxing voice with tons of exclusive from border wars and title betting shows the list goes on and on and on but in addition to that if you guys have questions for fighters trainers and promoters this is where you can submit them we will run out get these questions answered and put it back on the show just for you guys appreciate it peace